Hello there, great person, and welcome to Let's Review Doctor Who Season 14. Um, or at least who you got was first season. Um, it was interesting. Um, there were ups and downs, I think, but uh, we will just get into it, rank some episodes, and I I will just talk about them a bit. Um, don't uh, don't forget this is my opinion. Um, if you have another opinion, feel free to comment uh, about that uh, down below. Um, I I did plan reacting to it, but um, I actually just wanted to watch them with my wife, and we and we we enjoyed some stuff. Uh, some we don't, I uh, didn't, and uh, let's just talk about it and rank them and just recap it a bit and uh, talk about what I think of Shooty Guard was Doctor, which um, might interest you or not. I don't know. Doch ich frag, ich frag mich, wer wir sind. So, uh, yeah, uh, my background uh, of Doctor Who, like I'm, you see it in the background, I'm, I'm a 12th Doctor fan. It's my favorite Doctor by far. Um, though I, like, I love every Doctor, I, I think, say for, um, unfortunately, 13, because the writing was just, I couldn't, I couldn't stand the writing. Couldn't stand it. I was so, so sad for Jodie, really sad for her. So let's start. So I prepared this. We have uh, several tears here. Uh, we've got the Heaven Sent tier and the Orphan 66 tier. I don't have to talk about that. I think everyone will understand why I put them here. And uh, we'll just go through the episode, starting with um, Church on Ruby Road um, and uh, talk about them a bit and uh, rank them. And again, this is completely personal opinion, of course. You all will probably rank them differently. And uh, yeah, so let's, let, let's let's start. So Church on Ruby Road. Church on Ruby Road, I actually really like uh, uh, Shudi's acting. Um, the end felt uh, really impactful when Ruby was gone for a while. I did think the goblins were a bit too wacky. Um, I liked the singing, but uh, the, the magic rope stuff um, was a bit of a letdown. And I actually thought it would come back in when they were in the um, Remember Tardis in the last episode I, and, and the, he put up the strings. I thought, yeah, it's gonna go. The not, the, like, the not stuff will come in handy, so there will be a payoff again for that. But no, it was just in this episode. Um, he just murked the Goblin King. I didn't care. Like, it's okay. Just murk him. <laughs> it's like, he was about to kill Ruby. So I, I do think it's fine. It set up the Ruby, uh, uh, Ruby Sunday mystery, which was a bit intriguing. It set up the Mrs. Flood mystery, which we haven't resolved yet. Um, I do think she's Susan or uh, like the Rani, of course, always. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, we're, we're up. I do think it's a C for me. I, I enjoyed the acting. I enjoyed both their acting. I actually really enjoyed how Ruby was introduced. I love the adoption stuff in this episode. Um, so I am adopted as well. Um, and I could understand some of her stuff. Uh, I do have a different view on adoption than she has. Um, and her views in the later episodes really irked me, actually. Um, but it's personal opinion again. It's it's my experience. Like I get why you want to would want to know who your real parents are. I just never really cared because the people like the parents that raised me are my parents. Like they put in the effort, so to speak, and they took me in and stuff and were kind and supported me over years. And apparently Ruby doesn't care that much about that because every time Carla's with her and she's like, oh God, where's my real mom? And she never really cares for Carla in those scenes. And I hate that. Uh, but I, I will not rant about that here. It's just something that personally irked me a lot, the way the adoption stuff was written when Carla was there. Like, I, I really understand why Ruby is driven like that. I've, I've known some adopted people who are like that, so it was pretty realistic for Ruby. But the way she acted around Carla, that was really, really mean. And I really, really felt so sad for Carla. Really sad. Like, I was like, man, slap her. Figuratively speaking, don't slap people, of course. So, but it's a C. So next on Space Babies. Oh God, Space Babies was. It was funny. I liked. I liked that it was funny. Uh, the background plot was a bit nonsense. Sometimes I don't care about that actually. Sometimes I just need a random, stupid background plot. I would put it in D. I think. Um. 
I liked the, I really liked the the monster introduction. Like when it came down the corridor, I actually was like, oh, wow, what's this going to be? You know, it was just the Sleep More More monster rebranded. Like, and uh, yeah, it was like the, the babies were really cool. I loved them. Um, the end was a bit of an okay. I do think we all said those stupid butterfly joke, which made no sense in the hun uh, universe because... As far as I know, um, and it is more complicated than this, but mainly Doctor Who is like you don't change time. Um, and uh, my head cannon, and this is completely person head cannon. So you can, of course, say, like, no, I don't see it like that. I understand. It's just like I want to give you my head cannon. My head cannon is there's one thing that is always like, like the, the Doctor's timeline is going on, and sometimes he sees like mirages. Uh, uh, that could be and that will like uh, int influence him. Um, sort of like the Talos of the Time Vortex, like guiding him a bit uh, away from the danger. Um, perhaps because he's the timeless child, at least at least then would would have some use. But no, don't don't mention that, please. <laughs> um, so, like for example, I think Transalor was a mirage, so to speak. Like it was a temporal future mirage that he went to, so he could see what could be. And then it was changed, like Clara changed, for example. So, um, but but the butterfly was just random. Like, why would Ruby be suddenly a cactus person or whatever the fuck she was? I, I don't know what she was. It was like, it was, a, it was a cheap joke, didn't get paid off really. And uh, yeah, I liked the 12th Doctor's joke more when he was like, yeah, don't you remember Dave or something? I, I don't know who would. So it's a D. It's a D. Acting was okay. Um, children, I really liked them. They were funny, but yeah. So, uh, Devil's Court. I actually loved that one. I really, really loved that one. I think it was... I do think it was my... I do think it was my favorite of the season. Um, I really loved the uh, Mastro. It was really fucking hammy. It was really overacted and I loved it. It was so funny. Like, I love these types of villains because it fit... Because it was like an opera singer, like music itself was really cool. Uh, I did think that the Beatles stuff was a bit ham-fisted and like put like like latched on. That was not so cool. Um, the resolution was also stupid. Also, it doesn't make sense that Ruby snowed and Mastro was af afraid of Ruby. Like what? Um, Devil's Court introduction also wasn't that cool. Uh, like the story had some weaknesses and normally i would probably rate a story with these weaknesses like b tier but i just love the the acting and and the vibes i love the idea of this a pantheon of gods which was wasted in the end uh because every time a pantheon person came around in doctor who they were done in by stupid shit uh we had the the we had the um, toy maker done in by fucking ca playing catch which made no sense i hated that I actually, I do think Maestro was defeated the best of the gods. Um, Sutek was, let's let's say it like that because I can't express in word how fucking mad I am at that episode. <laughs> um, but <laughs> spoilers, Tisa. But yeah, it's it's like I I don't know, you know. It's I loved Maestro. Sometimes it is enough for me to just love a character a lot and the the uh, uh, acting of Maestro was it was over the top but it fit because I, I do think there was intention behind that the musical number in the end was okay I've heard people hated it I, I didn't really give a shit um, it was Doctor Who fun um, yeah so we've had Boom Boom for me was a C I think C I might I might put yeah it was a C it was a C I do think it is for me, it's Stephen Moffat's weakest story, actually. Actually. And I, I, I've seen there was a lot of hype about it, but I didn't get it when watching it. Um, I loved the idea. Like, the idea, like, Stephen Moffat has these brilliant ideas, um, but there was so much reused stuff they had, and the, the ending just fell flat. Um, I do think the first two thirds were really good. The first two thirds were, like, B-tier stuff. The acting was awesome. Perhaps even A-tier. Nah, for a perhaps a B, perhaps a B tier for it. Yeah, I do think it's a B tier. I will, re I revise my opinion. It was a B tier. It was a solid episode, but the resolution was so so dumb, so dumb. Like it made sense, but Stephen Moffat just like sometimes he he does too much stuff, and the resolution felt unearned. Like 
power of love turns AI good and whatever. Like, it's... <sighs> didn't enjoy that. I uh, love the acting. Like, the when, when like the first 15 minutes, I think, were so, so well done. Like, that was S-tier. The first 15 minutes, to me, was S-tier. Like, that was brilliant writing. But, it like, the, the longer it went, the further down it went. Um, I love the return of the clerics. That was a cool callback to... Um, to uh, the Matt Smith era, but uh, yeah, I do think it's a B. I, as I said, I do think it's Stephen Moffat's weakest story, but it's a good story. Like, don't get me wrong. But but and and I know you will be like, yeah, but but Wedding of River Song. Sorry, I love Wedding of River Song. I know people hate it so much. I love it. I loved it. I loved watching it. I do think the thing is though about, and I know I'm not going to talk too much about it, but why I love it is because of the ending. Uh, the ending made a lot of sense. It was a cool, well, cool, interesting twist on uh, on the regeneration on the beach. I loved that. It was for me satisfying. I know people didn't like it, perhaps, but and I also love that Trenzalo was brought up, and that storyline is my favorite one in Doctor Who. I think the Trenzalo storyline is my favorite part. It's it's awesome. I I like that is my 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 top tier storyline in Doctor Who. Trenzalo stuff like cracks, then uh, Trenzalo teased, and then Trenzalo coming. Um, anyway, uh, Lord, do we have here? Yeah, the yards thing. How many? 73, yeah, 73 yards. Oh, what is that? I have to say, I loved the horror element of it in the beginning. I loved that. The woman, creepy, everyone running away from Ruby. It was a thematically awesome episode. I do think the ending fell flat to me. I do think it's a bit worse than Boom. But I do think it's a B tier. The idea was very awesome. Also, uh, Millie Gibson carried that a lot. The aging was not done that well, and the resolution was... I would have loved Sutek to tie in here and be teased a lot more, because it is the perception filter as well here, somehow, that does it. Um, perhaps the perception filter warns her about, like, about that the Doctor's not here, then this would be in the future, but it was a bit confusing. Doctor stepped on this weird fairy cycle thing, which a circle thing, which as I like, I'm not not that big in the culture there. I don't know what exactly it's doing or what it's supposed to do. So it's just gone fine. And um, they could have done more with with uh, Ruby being alone and hunted. And I would have loved a more horror ending in the end. And like the time that like passed, yeah, it was a fine idea, but I would have gone in another direction and. Uh, yeah, I can't fault the writer for that, but I will. Sorry, <laughs> let's, let's, sometimes I've got to stick up my butt. Um, yeah, but I do think the premise was awesome. The premise was really fucking awesome. Like, this could have been a Blink-level episode if the, if the premise had been executed well and if, if, it, if the ending wasn't so weird and phoned in a bit. And, like, as well for Boom, the endings of these two were really phoned in, I felt really unsatisfying and they dragged them down a lot like these could have been both A's at least for me but so we've got the, the bubble thing I do think bubble thing is C tier yeah yeah I do think it's C tier I have to say it was the episode where I felt most like watching RTD in a good way um, it reminded me a lot of season 1 uh, it was weaker than Season one episodes. I think I would rank it on par with uh, World War Three. Um, I think from season one. I think it's the same level. Um, I love this wanky social commentary stuff he sometimes does with these things where you like, like again, people being a bit dumbed down. Like it also felt a bit like gridlock, but like gridlock is far superior, of course. Like that, like don't have I don't have to start, but. Um, you know, it's it's cool. Um, I, I love the idea of the bubble. Um, you have to suspend your disbelief a lot, and I am prepared to do that if it's like a cool story. Though there were some things that made absolutely no sense, which, for example, as the Doctor did, like, the Doctor, again, he wasn't in the episode, really. Like, he, he just phoned in, literally. <laughs> and... And then there was the revelation. I do think that there was uh, uh, that, that. I do think they want me to believe it was racism, but I do think the de doctor was so fucking patronizing all episode. And I was like, yeah, like of course they just not gonna listen to you if you're like this undiplomatic. 
which is like other doctors I felt would have not been this um, condescending to her. And she was condescending back. Like it was very mutual. But uh, yeah, that also I, that, that, that like, I would have loved it more if it was a bit more obvious um, that it was racism in the end. Um, and also I really dislike racism um, based on skin colors because that's so loaded, you know? Um, it felt a bit like, a bit often 66-like, actually. So let me actually put it down. I have to, I just thought about it. It's too often 66 of preachiness. I don't need that spelled out for me in the end, actually. Now that I think about it, you know, it's it's like, good God, why? Like, like for example, you, you could have made it like that it was, uh, like they were all genetically enhanced to be beautiful or something like that. But 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 I do think they were going for skin color and that that is that is preachy and I know it's an issue it's an issue on both sides for me like I've seen racism against black and white people uh, and it's go getting more and more of course I don't have to tell you that and you can take all these things with a bit more carefulness and and a bit more cleverly as well it felt preachy and i don't like that like you can like this is like it was a good idea in principle to put it in but i i think it could have been written a bit better love the doctor's reaction though like that acting was awesome um very very awesomely done but yeah rogue rogue and that was really stupid uh, but I have to say, I don't watch any stuff they were referencing. Like, I do think this was supposed to be a Bridget and stuff. Um, I really dislike the other doctors showing up again because seriously, just retcon timeless child. Just retcon it. Just be like, yeah, it was a um, it was a uh, malfunction in time or something. I don't care what you do. Just retcon it. And they like supported it here which is a decision they can make um if they are like yeah this is what we want to do they don't do anything interesting with it though you know because like the doctor the doctor is adopted as well he talked about that once so like he could have connected more with ruby and the anti twist was that he was connecting with ruby because he was the parent that left his child behind a bit you know susan but like he was he's adopted like why not use that more like it's just again as an adopted child and i hate saying stuff like this but that was man that you left that lying on the ground and never picked it up it's like so anyway rogue was really like it's not my kind of episode actually it was good it was fine but i really didn't care i didn't care for any character uh, basically doctor got rogue killed like i don't know it made no sense as well that she did the sound like what was that i just I just don't know, man. What what was that episode? The aliens were like cosplaying, I guess. I have it's not my it's not not my cut of cup of tea. Like this is stuff where I'm like skip. It reminded me of the girl who waited. Is it the girl who waited? No, no, no. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that one. The girl who lived. The woman who lived. The girl who died. The woman. Yeah, yeah like the Ashildia one. The Ashildia one with the stupid lion. It was exactly that episode to me, like the feeling we had. Uh, though the the um, woman who lived, the woman who lived had an interesting, like I loved the Ashildia time stuff, so it was a bit better in that regard. Loved Jake Harton's callback, so it was better in that regard. And I loved the the jolly guy who, who got almost hung. That was also a cool thing. And this episode didn't have this, this, these twinkles. Rogue was cool. I hope he comes back, but... Just because the character is cool and this, this, this plotting was so weak. A Legend of Ruby Sunday. I really, really, really loved that one. I do think it is the second favorite. But the, the fact that it felt, felt a bit flat in uh, Empire of Death, uh, I can't put it over Devil's Court. I, I watched it, I was in awe. Like, I was in awe the whole time. I loved it. I, I loved the new unit people. Morris was pretty funny. Um, loved that the doctor, like, basically murdered a dude and Kate was like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? I love that little thing. I love Bonnie Langford. She did awesome. Like, she was the best actress in those episodes. I 
Priya. Like, I loved her acting so good. Um, it hurt me a bit that the doctor did cry again. Um, I really liked his crying in, um, like, his, because sometimes, like, I, I really like if a character that's very, very um, experienced has seen a lot of bad stuff, like, he's gone through hell and stuff, and making that person cry that's like so hard like for example 12 is so hard and, like if he cries it's like what the frick this is so emotional and has weight and i felt that with a uh, shooty in in the um in the church of ruby road i felt the same feeling like wow this is the doctor he cries this is so meaningful and he cried again and again and again and again i was like yeah okay you, you, yeah you're 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 a bit close to the waters i get it mate just do some stuff. And like Bonnie, uh, 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 Mel, sorry, Bonnie Langford, Mel even told him like, come on, get the fuck up, mate. What the fuck are you doing? Like, it's was, and you know what the sad thing was? In that scene where he cried in, um, um, in Legend of Ruby Sunday, that would have been so impactful as well if he hadn't before so many times. You know, it's like, it robbed the situation of the gravitas it could have had. And I do think it robbed his doctor of the gravitas the doctor could have had. Um, and I do think Shooty's doctor doesn't have gravitas. And he should have that. Other, like, otherwise, I'm really content with him as a doctor. But because he, 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 he doesn't get shit done as well, I don't think he has solved any problem in, every, in any episode, really. Let, let's, let's actually go through them. Did he solve... So he didn't solve uh, Empire of Death. Of, of yeah, he solved Empire of Death, but that was re like really stupid. Rogue he didn't uh, solve. Bubble he didn't solve. Um, uh, was the Space Babies? Uh, did he solve that? No, I don't think he did. He just ran away from the monster. Children Ruby Road. He did solve that one. I, I give him. Boom. He didn't solve. That uh, Yards he didn't solve. Beatles he didn't solve. Like he didn't solve anything. Like he never had this. Because I'm here, I outwit you, and 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 uh, don't underestimate me or stuff like that. He never had this this weight. So and every time he solved stuff, he was like it was a bit cartoonish. Like killing the Goblin King was a bit cartoonish, um, and the monsters weren't even really that intelligent. So it wasn't like a big victory. And in uh, Empire of Death, like I'm gonna vomit everything out I ate today if I have to think about how he solved that one. So. God, Jesus fucking Christ, we got we get to you, Empire of Death, in a moment. So, yeah, and we get to it now. So anyway, but but Legend of Ruby Sunday loved the time window stuff. Um, it started not making a lot of sense with the uh, memory stuff. I loved how memories were used in the 11th area, uh, uh, era a lot better. Like with uh, remembering uh, in the end of um, Pandorica Opens. No, Big Bang, Big Bang 2. I don't know what the episode's called. You know the one where he he does the um, uh, uh, I don't belong here anymore uh, uh, where he goes to little Amy and uh, tells her uh, the speech. Um, that was one of my favorite Doctor speeches. Such a wholesome moment. Man, Matt Smith was so good. I love him as well as Doctor. Holy shit, man. But yeah. Um, anyway, it was good. And the suit deck reveal was awesome. I felt like really terrified. And then came Empire of Death. And Empire of Death, I think, is the worst Who episode I've seen. And I'm putting it in... I'm actually uh, renaming this episode Empire of Death. Uh, because Orphan 66 at least tried something. Holy fuck, man. Orphan 66, it's really shit. And it's badly written and acted in everything. It made no sense. And it was preachy as fuck. But it at least had a good idea behind it. This was utter rubbish. Like, not even... Chris Chitman was a shit writer. But at least he didn't deliver something like this. You can hate Timeless Child as much as you want to hate it. But at least that story had, like... A bit more, like, straightforwardness. Yes, 13 kills a Barristan. Because she was, like, a coward. But... So, like, this one's so much wrong. Like, the 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 Isutek is dumb as shit. Um, his weird minions don't kill the Doctor instantly for some reason. Then there's so, so many logical inconsistencies. Like, they go onto the Mel scooter, they go off, 
suddenly the cloud's gone. Uh, then they go to this weird random woman with the with the fucking spoon and like Ruby has like her necklace and Doctor says, "Yeah, we just needed some spoon. We don't know how the fuck the woman is still alive. Why is she there? Random as fuck." She talks about like, "Yeah, you're so so sexy to the doctor. Made no sense." Then we get back somehow to to the DNA testing, and we find out that Ruby's mother is a normal person, which. You know I love that on in theory, but you you promised that she wasn't. Like and with promised I mean you wrote in scenes that could not be explained with she was a normal woman. Like the snow makes no sense. Like has anyone read the script? Like what the fuck? Like 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 had she done it correctly, it would have been awesome that she was a normal person and that perhaps, I don't know, the TARDIS did it all or something, but there was no explanation. And then they leashed Sutek and he brings death to death, but how? Why? That made no sense. Um, then the doctor kills him? Somehow? But he was in the time vortex before and then there he didn't die, but now he dies and the stupid robe suddenly appeared. Love the memory TARDIS, love uh, Bonnie Langford's acting. But holy fuck. And then when she meets the mother, like she's like to the like color stands and she's like, I finally meet my real mom and can finally be happy, paraphrasing. And Carla's standing there being like, yeah. like, if I was Carla, I would be completely devastated. Like she would have been like, holy shit. And then she goes to the mother, that's a cool scene. Um, but holy fuck, man, that was so, so, so dumb. <laughs> also, the like apparently Sutek wasn't the TARDIS forever. And there have been so many fucking cool memes. And like, I, like, like, there's the like. Have you seen the meme with 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 the uh, from the fiftieth anniversary? Like, three suit decks on the three TARDIS. Uh, are we doing death yet? Are we doing death yet? No, no, not yet. It's like so dumb. Makes no sense. And his henchmen were so stupid. Oh, it was such a waste. Such a freaking waste. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, what's her name? Rose. Rose. I do think she was like, why was she there? Like they were, they they were like, yes, yeah, only essential personal, please, and she stays. She was like tasked doing like robbery stuff, and she's essential personal. F off, man. No, no. What was fourteen doing? We don't know. I also do think eleven was around in uh, in the Saloran episode. That was, I think, two thousand twenty four. Or 2000, perhaps it was 2030. I missed Cross. So, yeah, that's my ranking of the season. Um, I love Millie Gibson as a companion. I do think they had good chem chemistry. I do think Shooty should have had more gravi gravitas moments. Um, I do think the, the, the crying stuff is like... I love it when it's like two times a season, maximum. Then it really hits... But it's like, okay, yeah, you cry again. It's so, so bad. You want me to tell, you'd want to tell me the scene is bad and it's so sad. And no, like it's inflationary. I didn't like that. Um, I do think overall I would rank the season as a C. You know, it's, it fits average here. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I can't wait what you say if anyone even watches this and are still here. I don't know. Tell me what you thought. Um, Stay civil in the comments, please. And uh, I will see you down the line, probably for the Christmas special discussion or something if I do that. So take care of yourself. See you around. Bye.